All right, everybody, good morning, wherever you're joining from, or good afternoon, or good evening, who knows, in this whole virtual world. As you're rolling in, I do see you coming in. It is so lovely to have you here. Thank you for our first, first conversation for day two of Startup Autobahn. The rest of the show begins later, but we're literally spanning the world. One of our panelists is in Barbados, others are in India, I'm here in Germany. For those of you who are part of Startup Autobahn yesterday, you'll know me. My name is Dan Ram. I'm going to be the moderator for today's conversation. I am particularly invested in this conversation because on one hand, I am 100% thoroughbred Indian. On the other side, I do most of my work. About 70% of my year is spent in Germany, hosting tech conferences, talking to investors and entrepreneurs and government officials and education and all the pillars of a strong ecosystem here in Germany, in different cities. And so I'm really excited about today's conversation where we compare and contrast, celebrate, identify opportunities and possible bridges for the ecosystems in Germany and in India. As always, I like to keep it interactive. So please, if you look on the right side over here, you'll see a chat section. Would love for you to drop in questions. I'm happy to ask our panelists who I'll introduce shortly. And I'm happy for you to also just add your own thoughts. So as one of our panelists shares an idea, if you've got something you want to take uh, or please do, we'd love to learn from each other. But to kick things off, we have got the managing director of Startup Autobahn, which is of course powered by Plug and Play. He's also involved with Plug and Play Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, Sasha, will you come and join me on screen, please, and just share a couple words? I hope I'm on. Thank you, Dan, um, so much for the kind introduction. And um, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, welcome, panelists, which we will hear later um, on. Um, as you know, um, you know, I'm heading Startup Autobahn here in Stuttgart. Um, uh, it's one of our um, very successful programs uh, where we work together in the meanwhile with um, 29 um, industry partners um, on topics like uh, mobility, sustainability, production, enterprise um, topics with startups from all over the world in order to have successful um, collaborations with industries with the focus on implementation. And um, in the past two years, we have become so much interest from our industry partners, whether they're from Europe or actually they, they are Indian companies, and asking, when are you coming to India? Um, uh, we we um, need somebody who will drive an uh, international program for startups. Um, who can help with um, internationalized corporate um, innovation in India. And um, also, of course, with um, investments and uh, um, having opportunities um, for startups in India to grow. Um, so with that idea, um, you know, last year in February, before Corona started, I visited India and I was in Bangalore. Corona put a hold. Now that get a little bit better um, on, their, on their corporate innovation strategy, and they're actually seeing startups um, developing as one of their top channels to drive corporate innovation in their digital strategies. Um, we are trying here in this um, in this get together. Um, uh, common um, common interest to um, to drive and continue our conversations to um, um, start a platform in India. So really looking forward. Thank you, panelists. Um, some of you are waking up very early today. And um, with that, um, back to Dan. Thank you. All right, Sasha. Love it to have you. Thank you so much. Now, to those who are joining in, I see you. At least I see your name. Sundar, good to have you here. I see Till is here. I see Jessica, Nilesh, Tobias, Sarosh. It's good to have you guys. Again, uh, I know we've got a lot of functionalities within Hopin. We don't have to overcomplicate things. If you just hit the chat uh, section over there, then that will be fantastic. So just hit chat and then drop your comments in. 
Now, I see that Srinivas just mentioned that he couldn't hear anything, which is uh, possibly a small problem because Srinivas is going to speak next. So this will be an experiment uh, to see if Srinivas can hear us or not while he's sorting that out. And hopefully he'll be able to hear us in a few seconds. Let me tell you a little bit about why we had him do some opening words. Srinivas is an everything man, an everything man. Entrepreneur, investor, ecosystem builder, startup. Uh, I mean, like he is involved in everything. He's a corporate innovation expert. He set up T-Hub, which is uh, an incredible, incredible uh, space in Hyderabad where it's it's a meeting point for everything that is innovation startup. So we couldn't ask for a better person than Srinivas to share a little bit about what has been happening in India recently. So let's see, big experiment, Srinivas. Let's see if you can join us on screen and if you're able to see and hear me. Let's give this a shot. Uh huh. Possibly not yet. Okay, that is fine. Let's see uh, if we give him a couple more seconds. But if not, we go. I see that Anton is trying to support him. In the meanwhile, uh, we did ask earlier, where are you joining from? Uh, we'd love to know where you are. I know that Sophia said that she's dialing in from sunny Barbados. That's amazing. That's 4.30 in the morning. Uh, Samip says he's in Pune, in India. Fantastic. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, yes, let us know where you're from. Sundar is in India. Fantastic, Sundar. Which part of India? Usually I spend my time in Coimbatore. Um, and then we've got, yeah, Ahmedabad in the house. Excellent. All right. Can you see okay. me? Can you hear me? Excellent. Yes. All right. All right. Sophia Kunjan Rama. Lovely to have all of you here. Hopefully we'll have uh, Srinivas as well who will join us. Can you keep your videos on but mute yourself um, when you are uh, not speaking? That would be great. Okay, so uh, let's start with this. We've got a panel conversation on the current state of innovation in India. India has got to be one of the more exciting places. I was doing a little bit of reading, as you know, any moderator should, uh, about what is happening in India. I actually was not aware, even though I'm a very proud Indian, that uh, India is considered the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. They have 38 firms, which has raised over a billion uh, dollars. And surprisingly or not surprisingly, last year, in the middle of COVID, 12 new startups uh, got the unicorn status, which is fantastic. The government recognizes about 41,000 startups as of the end of last year, just created almost 500,000 jobs, uh, which is phenomenal. The ecosystem is booming, is different. That gone are the days of the call center and the reverse engineering India. Now is the time of innovation in space and fintech, CRMs, and so much more. So, with that, Let's have uh, let's go by time zone. So, Sophia, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you are, what you do? Uh, hi, everyone, and thanks, Dan. Uh, so, I'm so I'm Sophia. I'm the managing partner at BP Ventures. So, my my job at BP Ventures is to look for fantastic uh, startups in India and elsewhere to help us uh, scale up. Uh, clean energy offers uh, in India and obviously in other countries. So before I joined Ventures, I was part of the uh, mobility team within BP, where I helped develop the strategy globally for the company when it was still a side hustle. Uh, so now e-mobility is front center to the company uh, core strategy. And then I was asked to come at the end of last year to support Ventures on actually uh, developing our venturing approach and doing more deal flow in India. But as you said, that it is one of the best markets for us to find new technology uh, to deploy in India, but also elsewhere in the world. So um, I'm delighted to be there. And fingers crossed, I might actually be announcing my first uh, venture deal in a couple of weeks' time. So I'm really glad in India. Amazing, Sophia. And thank you for joining us so early in the morning as well today. Really, really appreciate it. 
Uh, Rama, let's go to you next. Uh, please tell us what you do, where you are. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Um, great to be here. Um, Sophia, Monai, Tunjan. Uh, Stating hopefully you can join us. Um, pretty delighted to be here. Uh, I'm in Hyderabad. Um, currently, my responsibility is I'm head of innovation for GMR Group, one of the large conglomerate, which is into obviously roadways, energy, one of the largest airport developers. Uh, we have our own uh, aviation academy. We are the largest MRO in the country. Uh, we also have a cargo logistics arm. We do land development around the airports. And I'm sure we have a bunch of other businesses uh, that I'm forgetting. Um, other than that, I think I uh, my my previous role was uh, chief innovation officer for T Hub, and I was part of the founding team uh, where Trini was was the founder. So we had a good time building India's largest startup ecosystem um, in the country in Hyderabad, and it has uh, gone on to become in short time it will become the world's largest or second largest uh, single campus startup ecosystem anywhere. Um, so we are obviously very proud of what we have been able to build together there. And I think as somebody was saying earlier, I think gone are the days where uh, we were like, you know, a V2 kind of a play. And I think there is a lot of neat ideas that is finding for traction, uh, customers, real deployments, and then going global from here. I mean, some of the largest things, uh, if you guys are tracking, are it's like the food delivery app, Zomato, uh, which has kind of gone through the roof. I mean, the valuation is like higher than any other app anywhere else in the world. I think that goes on to show that um, India is kind of uh, arriving fast, if not already, among the top three, four worldwide, depending on number and statistics that you want to pick and look at. But a lot more to be done, and we continue to be very excited and uh, look forward to like more partnership synergy with a whole bunch of people. So uh, these kind of things, uh, thanks to Plug and Play, who's been a, a champion and a great partner of ours, uh, we'd love to kind of. Uh, get to see more of this, uh, work, like you know, collaborating with global thought leaders like you all, and see where this leads us. And please, yeah, I mean, you know, you guys are welcome to kind of come here uh, to India and Hyderabad. Excellent, Rama. Thank you so much. Uh, Kunjan, do you want to share next, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Well, you know, thanks. G great to have everybody here. Um, including our participants also in the panel. Uh, I'm from Bombay. Um, I lead RPG Ventures. Um, we are the new ventures arm of the RPG Enterprises Group. It's a $4 billion diversified conglomerate. We have businesses in tires, construction, technology, pharmaceuticals, plantations. Um, uh, primarily, we drive two agendas through the ventures team. One is, uh, you know, we lead uh, new business incubation, building new businesses for the group in uh, greenfield territories. So we've started something in that zone in the senior care space in India. Um, secondly, we also serve as the corporate venture arm uh, for all the group companies. Uh, we work with SEAT, which is our tires business, which we work with KEC, which is our construction business help them find uh, relevant areas that they should embrace, work closely with, uh, help them find the relevant companies within those areas and make deals happen um, that are fruitful, uh, both from a business and a financial lens perspective. To give you certain examples with uh, SEAT, we've made an investment in an online tire retailer that also does doorstep fitment. Um, it's called Tires and More. Uh, we've also invested in an enterprise tech business, uh, which is an ERP for fleet operators. That fits in well as SEAT is uh, broadening its horizons to uh, fleet advisory services also. Um, so that's, you know, those are the, you know, like I said, uh, essential uh, roles and responsibilities that I serve within the group. Uh, you know, excited to be part of uh, plug and play and startup Autobahn going forward and, uh, you know, driving the open innovation agenda of the RPG group uh, beyond India to different parts of the world. Thank you again for having me here. Super. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready, let's jump right into this conversation. Hopefully Srinivas can join us. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I feel like we've got people who are eager to know what exactly is happening in the Indian ecosystem. So um, I'm going to put you three to a challenge. Kunjun, can you remember to just mute yourself uh, just in the middle, please? Thank you. Um, what I'm going to challenge you to give me one word or maximum one sentence responses to these questions. OK, so we're going to do a rapid fire round. The order will be uh, Sophia. Rama and Kunjan. One word or one sentence only. You cannot do more than that. All right. I will uh, beep you 
talking audibly. I'll just go beep right over you. So uh, simple questions, but I think it'll be nice to just kind of, I mean, Srinivas was going to give us like an overview and given that he's not going to do the overview right now, we'll have to do the overview, okay? So in your own opinions, question number one, um, in your opinion, the greatest challenge in the Indian startup ecosystem is fill in the blank. Sophia? Linking up the market, the marketplace yeah. with, uh, in, with investors. Many investors from outside, they're from different parts, some are impact, some are financial, some are strategic. It's link, making that strong link to be able to deliver great flexible solutions for customers. Good, Rama? Uh, more capital, more market access uh, to the economy, US, Europe, namely. Thank you, Kunjan. I think uh, startups as a whole need to come together to just enhance the you know quality of all Indians and you know create some more equality and equitability if that's word over there. I think that would be one of the most, uh, from my perspective at least, most satisfying challenges to overcome for the startup community. All right. Next question is: What is the most exciting vertical in the Indian innovation space? Of all the amazing thing that's happening in India, in your opinion, um, what is the most exciting vertical? Uh, E-mobility, transportation, is one of the biggest uh, contributors to why 35 out of the 50 cities globally are in India. And how do we, uh, in terms of pollution, how do we reduce pollution and get to cleaner air for people to move around in? For me, it is a renewable e-commerce tech. For me, it's um, enterprise tech, yeah, homegrown Indian companies building quality uh, software for the world. Um, I see plenty of opportunities. There's a vast talent pool available, um, and I think we can make globally competitive products uh, for the world. All right. Um, Srinivas, can you hear us and see us? I'm so sorry about this. We're supposed to be in take, talk about innovation for some reason. I couldn't log on to now. I can hear you now. I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, it could be me. Uh, you're all sounding quite robotic. I don't know if it's a hopin thing or if it's just the Wi-Fi in the hotel I'm in. So uh, maybe what I'm going to do is, Srinivas, since you're here, uh, would you mind maybe sharing a, a couple of sentences that you were going to do at the beginning? I'm going to re-log into Hopin and hope that my side uh, enhances uh, over here. So Srinivas, I'm going to hand it over to you, and then Dan, we'll be back we with this panel the, uh, conversation. Presentation? Dan, do we have time for the presentation? Uh, presentation? Yes. Yes, we do. All right. So let me do that while you out again yes all right so I'm, I'm actually just going to do a very very quick uh, summary of what's going on in the in the startup ecosystem right now um, I'm not going to take too much time because I think a lot of you will know some of this stuff but for those of you who are not in India um, India is just exploding right now there is so much innovation happening and uh, activity on the startup ecosystem uh, it's quite incredible uh, this is a general slide just talking about you know what's happening around the world of course digitization is happening um people are getting on the internet uh, and social media a lot and mobile of course but india specifically has really taken off there as well uh, this is from january um, as you can see 79 percent of people here have mobile phones um out of 1.3 uh, 1.1 billion people and uh, 624 million of those are internet users uh, that's quite a high number, and yet it's going up massively all the time. Of course, it's only 45% right now. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of people getting online for the first time uh, because of data, uh, and we'll talk about that also. Uh, look at the price of data in India versus other countries. It's incredibly cheap right now, which means that everybody across the uh, uh, economic strata can afford to get on and are right now. The data usage is going up massively, and 
COVID has actually amplified that a lot, of course. Uh, people have been locked in, have been using their mobile phones. It's mostly mobile internet here, more than uh, um, uh, computer internet, of course. And uh, just a quick overview of what's happening in the ecosystem in India right now in the, in the startup space, right? Uh, $70 billion were put in over 2014 to 20. Um, 55,000 start start startups total. We're the third largest ecosystem right now, but we're projected to grow uh, massively. It's growing really, really fast. Um, 135 plus unique corporates. And of course, that's an area that's expanding rapidly. And the idea is that plug and play will help accelerate that movement here. Uh, more and more large companies in India are getting interest in innovation where it used to be traditional business. That of course is happening globally, but much more so in India right now. Uh, accelerators and incubators are going up, of course, as more and more startups come up and need support. And 47% uh, 44, of unicorns have overseas markets, uh, which means they are global in nature. They're not just India specific. Um, the top 10 are worth over $100 billion. And the interesting thing is that, um, and of course, 58 of them, uh, we have 58 right now. With right, a whole bunch of them are going to go unicorn before the end of the year. The prediction is we'll have a, at least 150, and I, I personally think that's a, per, a, a conservative estimate. Of course, just this year alone, you know, a lot of people did think initially that with COVID, uh, things would slow down. They've speeded up in India massively. Um, here's a very interesting thing. 16 new unicorns this year have showed up, uh, and more and more are on the horizon that we can tell. I mean, I'm privy to a few conversations, I believe, a lot more are coming very, very soon. Um, the interesting thing is it's not just funding that's happening. For the first time, exits are really starting to pick up as well. Uh, and of course, that, that instills confidence um, in the startups by uh, funders. Uh, we've had 59 so far, um, and there are a bunch of IPOs coming up soon. Again, traditionally, none of them have ever gone IPO. We had our first IPO happen this year. There's a whole bunch coming very, very soon. Again, I believe this is a conservative uh, estimate that uh, valuations will go by three times uh, by 2025. And the other interesting thing, is, as I'm sure a lot of you know, um, there are a bunch of startups abroad in, in other countries that have Indian origin founders. Why is that important to the Indian ec ecosystem is because a lot of them are actually doing work back in India, are interested in the Indian market, are collaborating with other uh, Indian companies here. And that, of course, adds to the maturity of the Indian startup ecosystem. So founders have people abroad to, to, to talk to about scaling companies. Enterprise tech, of course, is very, very uh, uh, prevalent. And 35% of them are in the uh, ed enterprise space. Uh, deep tech is really, really picking up. That's the other interesting thing is traditionally, uh, India has had a lot of research happening, but it hasn't been commercialized. That is starting to happen a lot here. And as, as you can see, about 28% are, are funded right now uh, versus 11% globally. The number of startups themselves may not look that impressive. And yet, if you consider that there were very, very few three years back, it's, it is uh, great that so many are coming up. Of course, I'm not going to go into details on these, but the point is that at every space, whether it's ed tech, health tech, you know, and even clean mobility is a big thing right now. Electrical, electric vehicles, as you know, uh, really starting to pick up. And the government is putting their weight behind it. Uh, what this slide shows is that some of the big players like Bajaj and Hero, who are some of the local, uh, very large uh, corporate players in that space, are actually integrating with startups as well. Uh, and that, again, plug and play, I believe, will play a large part in accelerating that uh, integration. Our uh, venture capital investors, you know, a lot of them are global in nature as well. And initially, all of the uh, large funding happened from international investors. Uh, as the market has matured, we've had a lot of large, a uh, lot of investors set up VC funds themselves that are that are local in nature, and those are getting much, much larger uh, and taking up much more of the pie, which is a very, very encouraging. Um, point for the Indian ecosystem, I think. We need local capital, not just global capital. That's it for me from now. Um, I just want to get people excited. Of course, this was supposed to happen. Clearly, that didn't happen. So I apologize for that.
We're uh, still excited, Strina Bus, even in the middle of this uh, <laughs> panel conversation. It's great. <laughs> Uh, and of course, I have to figure out how to get out of sharing my screen now. <laughs> I love, I love the, know? the you know <laughs> the infinity loops that come in. Uh, Shrinivas, delighted that you were able to uh, share that with us. Maybe Anton can help uh, remove the uh, screen share. Um, yeah, please. that you got going. Anton, if you can hear us, maybe you can do that. Excellent, yeah. super. Okay, Srinivas, thank you so much. That was exciting. Some of the numbers I gave are already a bit outdated. Uh, it shows how quickly things are moving because uh, I was saying 38 startups and you've got a much bigger, sorry, 38 unicorns uh, yep. and, and you've got much larger numbers. So this is super exciting. And like you're saying, uh, even where things are looking for in 2025 and some of the verticals of growth, uh, this is a great time in India. Now, the question, uh, that I think a lot of people are asking is, where is this happening, right? Because India is this mammoth nation with a mammoth population, with uh, everything is so large scale. So for those who are in enterprise, those who are in innovation that are watching, and they're going, where where do we where do we enter? Like, where's the starting point here? Um, maybe Kunjan, could you maybe kick things off? Because I know in the work that you do. Uh, you're always scouting for uh, great partners, great uh, companies, startups to work with, collaborate, acquire, joint venture with. Uh, where where are the spaces where this innovation is happening? No, thanks for that question. So, you know, like I said, you know, we are the corporate venturing arm of the RPG group. Um, we work closely with our group companies. Uh, let me give you some examples on you know where my hunt map, my radar is right now. Um, from a CAD perspective, uh, you know I shared some examples of uh, spaces and companies we've already invested in, either on fleet management technology or you know um, online auto commerce, including tire retail. Um, I think going forward. Um, you know, CIAD is a mobility business. Our CIAD's mission statement is to make mobility safer and smarter. Um, as we think of the world going ahead, uh, you know, two large spaces where we are identifying opportunities, which, you know, we're convinced that this is the world of tomorrow. Uh, one is electric vehicles, the whole value chain and the ecosystem around it. Uh, very soon, um, more than half the vehicles flying on Indian roads will be powered by batteries. Um, and the second is connected vehicle technology. Right. So I think um, in a world of hyper uh, digitization where everything is getting connected, you know, the local um, grocery store around the corner is getting connected uh, as senior citizens are getting connected, you know, very comfortable to order on Zomato or Swiggy or even make complete payments through um, Google Pay and Phone Pay. Um, you know, it's a, it's a matter of time before cars also get connected and digitized, right? So I think, you know, we'd certainly see that these two as very hot spaces right now and very, it's not even hot. I think it's, you know, it is the way the world will develop going forward. That Those are two areas from a mobility side. I think, you know, beyond SEAT, we also work with, um, you know, uh, some of our other companies with KEC, which is actually RPG Group's largest business with a turnover of about one and a half billion dollars. It's a construction business. Uh, they put up transmission towers. Uh, they put up, uh, you know, railway infrastructure, solar infrastructure. Um, you know, from th their perspective, we are looking at construction tech. Uh, now, this is an area which is very, just very nascent in India right now compared to the mobility universe. But, you know, I think it's a matter of time before traditional construction businesses embrace digitization quickly. Um, and hence, we are looking at companies that can add to that roadmap. Companies, you know, doing um, AI, ML-based image and video analytics, uh, companies around construction robotics, companies around, you know, making building information management, BIM as it's called, easier to use. Uh, so that's another whole space that I'm discovering right now, not only in India, but globally also. Find the relevant companies that could accelerate some of our companies' growth in India. I think, you know, while this may be from a corporate venturing lens, I think beyond that, I would say, you know, just on a more, you know, uh, new business perspective, the two that, uh, you know, we are finding businesses that are addressing the two biggest themes around the world right now. One, which is living in a more sustainable world. And second is, you know, living in a more digitized world, right? So, you know, we are trying to identify how can we build the right businesses if it's the former sustainable, is it again around electric vehicles, is it around solar energy, or if it's the latter, 
how do you create omnipresent how do you make digitization capabilities upgrade across the universe not just restricted to large enterprises but down to the uh, small business level also the individual level as well so i think that's in a nutshell in terms of where we are seeing pockets of opportunity and growth Thank you, Kunjan. That was such a thorough answer. Uh, fascinating to see uh, in what different areas and verticals RPG Ventures is working in and where you're involved. Sophia, I've got to ask, uh, you've always been such a good uh, supporter and partner at Startup Altavon, and now with the BP Ventures role that you're in, you're not just looking at India. I mean, I, I also saw that China's on your map. Uh, I think you're doing things in the Middle East and Mexico and Israel and Brazil. What excites you most about India compared to some of the other regions uh, that you're working in? What, can you share some insights as to where BP Ventures is exploring, digging uh, in India? Okay, so yes, I have a big geographic remit, uh, but actually, the, in a way, most of these geographies are connected. And, I'm, and I do believe that, if we look at really focusing on how does companies like BP uh, exploit, you know, take the best of what India is offering, uh, which is kind of what I call a flexible approach to problem solving, which you only find in what I call developing developing markets, where I grew up as well, where you don't have huge amount of resources and you're trying to use those re resources in an innovative way to help the country both build, increase the middle class uh, in terms of economic empowerment, but also uh, get the country towards uh, cleaner energy and a lower polluting uh, footprint. In there, because of the deep tech and the deep capability, can also be a beacon to the rest of the world and to the other countries that I'm also focused in. So that's why a lot of my energy is being spent right now on understanding where the opportunities are in India and also uh, working out how to uh, engage with ecosystem partners like Startup Ottoman and also a lot of the ecosystem companies uh, on our platform in Stuttgart. How do we work together even more on uh, uh, developing the program in India as well? Uh, so, I mean, it, for me, uh, doesn't matter in terms of where, where yeah, in terms of geography, the, 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 the tech comes from, but I think more and more, a lot of the great tech will come from India. Thank you so much, Sophia. Uh, Rama and Srinivas, you guys were involved, uh, maybe still involved in T-Hub. I mean, T-Hub is one of the greatest stories out of uh, India. I think everybody knows about T-Hub. Uh, it's the ultimate, cornerstone, uh, the, the, the meeting place of everyone that's involved in the space. But that said, when we're talking about this incredible, incredible growth trajectory that India's on, um, where do we still need more players? What's missing? Uh, where do we need local players to step up? Where do we need inter international partners to step in? Uh, what's needed to hit these incredible, uh, Srinivas, you were talking about some of the things that are on the horizon of the next couple of years. Uh, is there anything lacking or is India good to go? And we just leave it as it is and it's just going to achieve these targets. Well, <laughs> there's always things that we can do better, right? Um, there's ecosystem issues, there's um, government issues, regulatory issues. Um, a lot of that has been eased, right? Uh, a lot of this changed actually with the uh, inauguration of the last government, um, ease of doing business has been an absolute focus. Um, it used to be, a lot of people would complain about how difficult it was to do business. It's got a lot better. Having said that, there are still hurdles. The good thing is that the government is listening at least and is responsive. There are still some areas around um, investment, for example, uh, that the VC industry is facing. Um, but it, by and large, it's getting much, much better. I think one of the key areas that I truly believe is, is has been an issue, and it's getting uh, better, as you can see by the answers that Kunjan and uh, Sophia had given, is that corporates haven't got involved in the ecosystem as much. It was still very hard for uh, startups to get access to corporates um, as a customer, um, forget as an investor, of course. Um, so, so that's always been an issue. 
the funny thing was at T-Hub, uh, you know, Rama and I worked on many, many projects uh, with large corporates and engaging with the startup ecosystem. What we found was it was always the multinationals who came in first. Uh, getting the local players to, to engage was really, really hard. But that's changing fast. Uh, we're seeing a lot of large uh, corporate uh, houses in India wanting to engage. To be honest, it's still not as easy because they're still feeling the waters and figuring out how do we do this, right? It's, there's a, a huge cultural gap between corporate and startup. Uh, but, you know, I, again, I do think it's much uh, getting much, much better. Rama, maybe you want to add a couple of points? Sure. It's always hard to add after Shredi has spoken, but I'll try. Um, I think uh, one is, I think, great set of slides, Shredi. Um, phenomenal deck. And I think just for the benefit of others here, I mean, Shredi is among the handful of people in the country who is an authority on startup ecosystem. Um, he kind of literally advises government policies, startups for sure. And then uh, specifically corporates, right? I think uh, together we have spent a lot of time advising corporates of what should be your roadmap and journey of how do you build your corporate innovation? What does that even mean? So whether it is looking from inside or looking externally. And um, we have built the largest corporate innovation for sure in the country and among the few uh, across the world. Um, and I think speaking from that experience, um, I mean, definitely like, you know, the multinationals are the first to hop on because they've already seen what happens uh, in US, Europe, wherever they are headquartered. And it's easy for them to kind of, you know, there is no need for a sell. Uh, it's a, it's already an auto sell, right? So it's just a, about like, what do you want to do for teasers and how do you scale from there? I think for the Indian companies, it's always been like, you know, a little bit of a very wise pound foolish. Um, I think at least in this particular zone, um, I think it's, it's changing as Srini was saying that people are now starting to listen both the political class and the corporate on shows. And they think this is a good space to kind of invest and put more dollars. Um, one, for learnings, two, understanding how tech is changing things. Three, maybe there is somebody like, you know, pulling the rug under you. And four, you may want to double down invest for, for multi-x return for your business and uh, basic ROI. So I think some of those things are happening and uh, there is so much more that can be done. Um, India is obviously like, you know, is, is the next China and more. So I think for people who want to kind of really uh, take their positions and spaces, uh, this is definitely the time. Uh, there is multiple of access that's going to happen from here on. So I think the earlier, the better. Thanks for that. So now that we know that now is the time, uh, again, the question is, how do people get started? I When I hear from whether it's multinationals or startups here in Germany, they're like, wow, we'd love to enter the Indian market. Uh, or even uh, with some of the bigger ecosystem players in Germany that are funded, you know, 10, 15, up to 100 million euro, they still come to the question of where do we start? Uh, so Rama, you already said that Srinivas is a person to talk to. He, he's got his uh, hands and fingers everywhere. So uh, obviously he's a great resource uh, in India, but are there certain launching pads? Are there uh, certain hubs and spaces? Are there government officials? Where Where do you get uh, going and I see a question here from Jessica also about that. How do we how do we support the innovation in India? So does anyone have a, a thought on that? Do any of you in your roles have kind of the connecting uh, part of like come talk to us and then we'll take it from there um, or any resources you're aware of that would be a good starting point for people. I suppose I could take a crack at that. I mean, it, it, it's a very broad question, right? And it yeah. depends on. Um, who you are, what space you're in, etc. But if you're talking from a startup perspective, I mean, obviously, as we all know, the heavy lifting always has to be done by the entrepreneur himself in the beginning. Uh, you got to do your validation. You got to figure out which market you're going into and make sure that you're solving a real need. Right? That part is on you. Um, if you're talking about to scale up, there's there's all sorts of places that you can get engaged um, to help you grow. There are incubators, there are accelerators, if you're getting to that point. You know, there are entities like T-Hub that do a whole bunch of different things. Um, actually, like I said, there's, there's over 250 in India alone. Um, and you know, there's probably something close to you. You want to look at whether it's a, a geographic uh, place, you know, something close to you, or you want something that is specific to your domain. There's all those as well. On the funding side, again, there's all sorts of schemes that the government has come up with recently uh, that you can apply for as an early stage startup. Um, 
yeah, again, like I said, it's a very broad question, so I'm not sure beyond that what else to say. I think I'll also to add to that, and I'll let Punjan and Sophia jump in. Uh, the, the central government department, they have various schemes, uh, whether it is the Department of Science and Tech, Ministry of Electronics, a whole bunch of them. And they there is this, um, not only the viable uh, funding gap that's available, but also for doing international uh, cross-border programs, the soft landing, things of that kind. And we ourselves have done like you know a bunch of uh, those things with Canada, with Singapore, with US. Um, we did recently one with Korea as well. So I think um, there are those kind of things definitely available for international collaboration of startups, which is facilitated by government, quasi agencies, or accelerators like T Hub. Um, and there is many more bridges that um, now people can dip into depending on which lens you are looking at, either as a startup or as a corporate. Um, so there is a bunch of vehicles today available, but I think you will need to pick and choose which are the right vehicles from a time to impact, uh, from a money to impact standpoint, where you can really get your journey started. So I think some of those launch pads are really kind of, even though there are a few which are really mature, um, I think startups can come like sit out of those places and scale and grow their businesses among other things. Kunjana Sophia, do you want to add anything there? Otherwise, I, yeah, go ahead. Kunjana. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I, it's not uh, this point, but there was a previous point, but it's in the, you know, it's, it's in the same bucket, which is how everybody's coming together to uh, first embrace innovation and then just, you know, catalyze the startup ecosystem, right? I go back to Shrini's point, which is Indian corporates um, are not doing enough. Uh, yes, the MNCs are ahead in the race right now, but I think that's changing also, right? I mean, I can give you an example at RPG itself. Uh, you know, while I lead RPG Ventures, my colleague Samip, who's, who's listening to us today, uh, he leads innovation uh, for the RPG group, right? I think the first step was to make innovation, you know, part of our thinking DNA. At the RPG group across our 20, 25,000 employees, right? So some plits are at the central level, but you know now we have is chief innovation officers across each group company at a CAT at KEC. I think the purpose of this is just to get people to think innovatively and make that part of their mindset on a day-to-day -day basis. And how small, small things or interventions can make a difference at the shop floor or servicing the customer. In fact, what we do on a yearly basis is have an innovation day at RPG where you know we select the top 40 or 50 projects that have been done by all our group companies and give them a forum. This year we actually did it all virtually to showcase them uh, so that people can learn from this and then sparks that mindset even more. I think that was the first step. I, mean, I think the, the, and that creates a good positive externality. Right? Last year, for example, with SEAT, uh, we did an accelerator, we called it Accelerator, through which you know we looked for relevant companies that SEAT would like to work with in material sciences, in uh, vehicle safety, around fleet management technology. The outcome was you know just open innovation, which is, you know, work with these companies, do a POC, do a trial, and see how it goes from there. So, you know, while, yes, lots more to do to catch up on, I think the agenda is certainly going, we, I'm seeing it live at RPG Group, and I can see that, you know, even our peer groups um, and companies also embrace this similar uh, format of working with early stage businesses, and these are Indian corporates as well. I think the... the the way I would look at it is that, I mean, BP has, uh, through its uh, various joint ventures, we have a big joint venture with uh, Reliance. I mean, we have a big retail fuel presence, uh, 5,500, 6,000 gas stations. Uh, we've got a lot of mobility and convenience offers. Castrol is a big brand, both in the aftermarket, but also uh, in in the future in terms of e-fuels, et cetera. And also we've we've developed a joint venture with, with Alliance again in terms of the e-mobility space. We even have uh, 45 airports where we uh, have Airbnb fuel being served, you know, so it's, and, and not to mention all of the hydrocarbon activities, both onshore and offshore around in India, with a focus now on gas and cleaner. So we've got, let's say the customers, we've got, let's say that, that sort of, uh, consumer and business space that uh, startups can 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 help to develop better offers with and and also scale up their businesses. What we are still grappling with is that we've got our main um, office in in Mumbai. We've got a huge digital hub in Pune. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got presence in in Delhi, and that's going to be a focus point for us. Is is how do we connect all of these three and just make the startups' lives as easy as possible, but also work 
as well with the other uh, ecosystem partners in India to it, it just scale up as fast as we can. Because like you said earlier, I mean, this is a market that's moving at, at, at the pace of light as well now. I mean, after a long time of just, you know, just not, not doing enough. So it's how do we just keep up almost with India as India starts to to grow and, and de deliver much better solutions for its for its citizens. So I think everybody who has any experience with India knows that India is a country of incredible diversity. It's a country of incredible culture. It's a country of incredibly smart and hungry people who are so eager for growth and development. Um, I think what some people might be curious about is what is the scope? Um, what does the next five or 10 years look? I know whenever people are on a panel, they're always asked to have a prophetic word. What will it look like in five or 10 years? So probably you were geared up for this question. Uh, but as the experts uh, in today's conversation, uh, I know there's gonna be people going, all right, it sounds great where we're at today, but what's on the horizon for the next five years or 10 years? Do you guys want to maybe share uh, maybe some verticals to watch out for, maybe some startups, if you are uh, working very intimately with a few that people should keep an eye on, uh, whether it's new collaboration opportunities. Um, yeah, what's coming up in the next five, 10 years? I can go first. I'll, I'll pick from where Sophia left. I think the entire renewable hydrocarbon space is very interesting and I think um, to kind of use the rubber meeting the road paradigm. Uh, we are looking at hydrogen cells very closely. So Sophia, definitely we should talk more. Um, happy to kind of pick up the thread on that. One of the things as a group, um, and then we, we didn't mean to beat the Indian companies uh, too hard on the last round. I think, um, I mean, obviously like RPG and the company that I'm representing, GMR, we are pretty large on innovation startups and also like you no know, investment funds. Um, I think we can obviously do more. So that was the gist on that. Um, from, a, from a current, uh, Western and tech perspective, they're looking at um, EV and autonomous in a large way. And I think even though autonomous seems like a very, very distant future, uh, which it could be, but we are looking at uh, pieces of it that we can kind of, you know, start making the jigsaw out of. Uh, we are looking at like, you know, a vision of a completely autonomous, uh, not only carbon neutral, but a carbon positive airport, uh, and be the first of its uh, kind and category um, in this part of the world. And we are looking at all those pieces that will take us there. Um, so I think we today, I mean, uh, airport is like a classical example of a small smart city where all types of technology intersect, whether it is uh, like, you know, CMOS camera sensors from a security standpoint, passenger profiling, uh, the entire monitoring and heat mapping of passenger interest flow, ensuring there are no choking points, ensuring that, you know, what about the data that comes out of each of the aircraft fleet, uh, the entire ground handling paradigm, uh, which is a classical example for any of those IOTs to be deployed to get a snapshot of what it looks and means from a, from a network operations standpoint, getting a sense of things. I think we are just kind of a little bit inundated in terms of all the tech uh, crisscrossing us. And we are very um, optimistic that um, in, in, in five years, uh, time, I think we would kind of start to become examples um, for some of the manufacturing and heavy infrastructure um, examples like airports as we are today for for fintech and like you know digital payments like UPL. Yeah, perhaps I'll perhaps I'll comment on it, uh, which is uh, so for me I see maybe three three things which are really are really exciting me right now. The first one is around well, obviously e-mobility. I mean, we, we all bring this sort of US UK model that 800, 900 out of 1000 people own a car. 22 out of 1000 people in, in India own a car. So forget your forget your uh, construct if you're coming into India and thinking, oh, we're going to get more and more people to buy cars. Yeah, that may not be what the future will be is, but this how do you enable affordable uh, transportation and clean transportation to millions more and find solutions that fit what the market needs as well. Because yes, there is a push towards uh, 
people getting richer, economic empowerment, but that's going to take decades still. So make sure that your business model is also fit for purpose. And I think you'll see more and more business models which really fit, fit really and help the, the country just explode as well. I think the second point is around what I call grid edge. I mean, uh, grid edge solutions, which is millions uh, as one of BP's purposes, which is providing reliable, affordable, and convenient energy, clean energy to millions of mil as many people as possible. There, there are too many people right now still living on what I call the grid edge, uh, in terms of not being able to get energy to them on a reliable basis. And I think you'll see to lift people out of poverty, you're going to need to find more and more solutions, and hopefully they're going to be clean which is uh, at Rama's point. And the third area is around city. Yeah, we a lot of times we, we think about, as you said earlier, India is a big country, but I think we need to think as well city solutions. Um, BP has been doing some interesting stuff in other countries. So it's set up at Houston, set up at Aberdeen, set up at the Republic of Azerbaijan. It's setting up soon with a couple of cities in India where it's going to the city government and city partners and say, let's solve this problem at uh, at a city level. So because you, you can't necessarily s solve all of the problems at a country level, but focus on a city level. So I think you're going to see some fantastic, let's say cities competing with each other to, to who is providing the best services for their, for their communities as well. And I think that's something I'm looking forward to as well. Yep. No, I think, I think the, you know, the short answer to your question, how do I see the next five, 10 years then it's just going to explode even further, you know, if you think 14 new unicorns, I think uh, uh, Srinivas has already given us a sneak peek of the upcoming minicorns and sunicorns and of course unicorns also. So I'm extremely bullish. That's why I love what I do. Um, and uh, I think if I had to pinpoint down to a space, um, I mentioned it earlier, but I, I, I see the whole world around enterprise tech. Um, Indians making globally competitive software uh, for the world and not just for India. You know, if you go back a few decades, that's exactly what Infosys, TCS, HCL, all the big wigs today did, right? They, you know, they tapped into this vast engineering pool in India and exported their services. So we, we completely have the DNA to build software to, you know, around big data, around edge cloud, around, make, you know, producing software faster uh, and many more in that zone. Uh, you know, we've seen success stories already, you know, Freshworks, recently Postman and Browser Stack. I think these are great examples of Indian born companies making products for the world. So I, I, I'm very bullish about that space and I see a lot more coming out of that zone. Just to add to everything, I mean, um, the truth is there's so much that's going to change over the next uh, 10 years. Uh, India is a vast country. Um, it's incredibly diverse, as we've already said. So for every example you give, there's an opposite example that is also true. Um, we have, on the one hand, we've got this young, dynamic population of people that are now globally exposed and wanting lifestyle uh, choices to be uh, to change, right? And looking at content and looking at education and they're looking at... Um, um, gaming and they're looking at all, all you know all the stuff that any any youth around the world is up to and so you've got a whole bunch of um startups coming up in that space you've got people who now have spending power and purchasing power and are looking at um world-class products they're watching the food channel and they're watching you know things like this and they want you know beverages that are new and they want new types of alcohol and they want new types of food and you know all of that's happening but at the same time we've also got you know, the old India that's in the rural areas, uh, there's a lot of pro problems to be solved out there that are being solved slowly by technology uh, that's purely local in nature, right? No international company is going to be able to solve those things uh, because they won't even understand the realities on the ground. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of that stuff. We're a country, you know, that has every state is like a different country. It's, you know, India is like Europe in a sense, right? Every state has its own language. Um, and it's not even a language that's united by a script. We've got multiple scripts even. So vernacular communication is incredibly complex here. Uh, and applying that to a whole bunch of solutions is also happening. So the truth is that, you know, it's incredibly vast. Everything is going to transform. Uh, we've, we've got the movement of Indians that have lived abroad coming back to India for the first time. You know, it didn't happen. First time being over the last 10 years, of course. But that itself is accelerating things. It's just incredibly exciting. That's all I can say. 
I think that's a really sound way to end uh, today's session. This has been really informative and very inspiring and very exciting. I hope that the passion in Sophia, Kunjan, Srinivas, and Rama's voice and comments is transferring across the internet to people who are watching. If you are interested in getting involved in what's happening in India, contact these guys, contact Sasha and Anton in Plug and Play. Plug and Play want to do some big things in India, some new things in India. And of course, Plug and Play brings with them a lot of corporate partners, a lot of startups. So do get in touch with them as well and see if this might be a way for you to enter and be a part of uh, what is certainly making history already. So to everybody who's on this panel, thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of this. Just, sorry, I just, I just, I just sorry to uh, cut you there, Dan. You know, Jessica had an unanswered question, which was about how can startup autobahn aid the innovation in India, right? And I think, mm -hmm. you know, while you know, I did say that corporates, Indian corporates, are embracing innovation and also working with startups. I think what this program also does is open innovation with peers, right? You know, Daimler working with Bosch or ba Bosch working with Porsche or whoever, right? I think that that equation can certainly be accelerated. Right, which is the large enterprises working with each other. And that's one change that I think a, an organization like Startup Autobahn can bring to India. Um, and that's what I'm also looking for, taking advantage of being part of this program with some of the global companies. Sorry, I just, I know that went uh, unanswered. I just wanted to make sure that we close the loop. That. Thank you so much. Excellent. All right. So to everybody uh, who's watching, I hope you enjoy the rest of the programming. We've got many hours of multiple streams. Uh, meet the startups. Do check the networking section on the left side over here, the expo space where you can actually talk to the startups. The uh, 29 startups are part of Expo 10, as well as previous ones from previous expos as well. So thank you for being part of day two. Tomorrow, I'm back for day three, where we'll be interviewing Jan Frodeno, triple uh, time world champion triathlete. So uh, do join us for that as well. To our panelists again, Sophia Kunch and Srinivas and Rama, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And to everyone watching, keep keep cooking and being part of day two. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye, guys.